Cattle Raisers Agricultural Research and Education Committee. Mr. Darren Turley, Executive Director of the Texas Association of Dairymen, and Dr. Kevin Pond, Dean of the Paul Engler College of Agricultural and Natural Sciences here at West Texas A&M University. And now it is my privilege to invite forward President Wendler. Todd, thanks so much, and thanks to all of you for being with us this morning. I know many are with us on um, audio, uh, video stream, and we appreciate that too. Um, we are um, blessed at West Texas A&M University uh, for system leadership under the direction of Chancellor John Sharp. He wishes he could be here today, but he couldn't make it, travel restrictions and uh, busyness at the system in helping shape policies that allow us to respond intelligently to the COVID-19 challenges. Also, someone who was central in this process, Dean Eleanor Green from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Texas A&M University, also sends her regrets today. Both of these individuals were central in much of what we celebrate here today. During the 86th legislative session, WT received $4 million uh, in appropriation over the next two fiscal years to establish the Center for Advancing Food Animal Production in the Panhandle. The founding of that center and the aggressive expansion of ag education is in line with efforts to reach local and regional industry needs in the Texas Panhandle. It is our first priority of our long-range plan, WT-125, from the panhandle to the world. This new center will prepare university undergraduate and graduate students, pre-vet students, and post-vet students to work in the food animal industry, from embryo through production to retail, in one of the most concentrated meat and dairy production areas of the world. The funded food animal production initiative now allows for the addition of faculty, instructors, and graduate students to meet the needs of teaching, research, and outreach. Not just in the panhandle, but beyond. Knowledge and insight that are gleaned right here in the Paul Engler College of Agricultural and Natural Sciences will be spread well beyond our borders and will make WT more vital to the panhandle, I think, than ever before. The state and Texas A&M University have already invested more than $100 million in facilities right here in the, what I call the ag, con, the ag quadrant. This is the center of ag programs here at West Texas A&M University. A hundred million dollars. These facilities include the Paul Engler College of Agriculture and Natural Sciences. That was funded, I just have to say this, 75% through tuition revenue bonds and an additional 25% through gifts from various industry leaders and individuals related to WT and the Texas Panhandle and the industries that call, the ag industries that call uh, West Texas and the Panhandle home. In addition, uh, the Veterinary Education Research and Outreach Facility, which is just to my right, um, and the Texas Veterinary Medical Diagnostic Lab were both funded. The Vero facility from the Permanent University Fund and the TVMDL facility by direct state appropriation in the 85th legislative session. Most recently, Chancellor John Sharp committed an additional six million dollars in five installments of 1.2 million dollars per year to support faculty and graduate student positions related to agriculture phd programs and the two plus two program partnership with wt and the college of veterinary medicine at west texas excuse me at texas a m university i want to say be especially cognizant and thankful of our regional legislature legislators for their leadership and vision in all of this. 
They understand how vital WT is to this region, as well as the importance of our mission in education, research, and service to the panhandle and indeed to the great state of Texas. I also want to thank our faculty and staff members who work so hard in helping define these programs and communicate them. As always, our WT family is committed to providing a nurturing, rigorous educational environment for learners at all levels, both on and off campus, degree-seeking and non-degree-seeking students. These, part, these are partnerships that serve all of us well, and that service is in the DNA of West Texas A&M University. Thank you all for your ongoing interest in and support of this excellent university in all its dimensions. And as always, on, on, Buffaloes. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, the, the arrival of President Walter Wendler and the creation of WT-125 has resulted in WT reinforcing our commitment to be a regional research university. Uh, Dr. Raspberry had asked me for this event to kind of explain what a regional research university is, and so I'm going to read this uh, kind of a, a short statement from WT-125, at least providing an overview. The overall purpose of a regional research university is to serve regional students and regional needs first believing that if the institution cannot serve locally first, it will serve nowhere well. The focus does not limit a regional university's worldwide reach. Instead, it reaffirms similar regions across the nation and world will benefit from its attention, research, and resolution of the challenges and opportunities that characterize the institutional and geographical context as a driver of knowledge. After I shared that with Dr. Raspberry, I said, could you give me an example, because that seems a little too, uh, a little too detailed as, to what I, as, as opposed to what I would look for. And so, as an example, I started thinking about how would, uh, how would one go through and explain what a research university, a regional research university is. And so, I've lived in West Texas now for 28 years, but I was born and raised in Northern California. And I don't know that you can end up finding two regions that would be much different than West Texas versus Northern California. So, as an example, I would consider myself someone that would be fiscally very conservative, but at least socially aware. So I think that would make me a moderate conservative, at least in West Texas. But in Northern California, that would make me a very strong white ring, uh, right wing conservative. It is not the same environment. Uh, a couple of years ago, I had a student that had just uh, got a new job offer, and he was so excited, he came up to me and said, I got a job, my starting salary is going to end up being $100,000, and I was really happy for him. I was like, wow, $100,000 is great, a 22-year-old, and then the next obvious question would end up being, well, where are you going to go and work? And he said, well, I'm going to be in the Silicon Valley, and I had thought, I didn't want to ruin it for him, but I had thought, you're broke. You're going to have to live in your car. That is a completely different cost of living there. That would probably be three times more expensive than what it would end up being to, have a, to live in the West Texas area. And, so, and even whenever I think of the two as, as different places, I think of the agriculture production. At least where I would end up being from, you would have blue diamond almonds. So almonds is a big, a big part of that community. You'd also have walnuts and pecans. When I think of West Texas, I don't think of nut production in any way, shape, or form. So when I look at those two regions, they are completely different in so many ways. Whenever you think of a regional research university, one of the things that we would do when it comes to research in this part of the country is that we would look at things like drought and water conservation, and we would look at things like uh, wind energy and dealing with wildfires. And the reality is, although those areas are completely different, geographical context, political context, uh, economic context are completely different, the research that we do in, the, in this area translates very easily to what needs to end up being done in that area. Our research in West Texas translates to the rest of the world, including an area that's so much different like Northern California. As part of our research effort at WT, WT is committed to expanding our doctorate programs. If you go to 2016, the number of doctorate students WT had in the program at that time was 13. If we look at it in 2020, we're up to 47 a completely different uh, change when it comes to those, that doctorate initiative. I would also say that there's been a little bit of shift, and at this point in time, the College of Agriculture and their established uh, doctorate program, they're working with College of Engineering and College of Business on trying to expand some specialty areas as part of the ag doctorate program. So those specialty areas would include things like agriculture and water systems engineering, 
It would include things like artificial intelligence and machine learning. It would include cybersecurity, it would include an area like data analytics. These are all industries that are part of the 2.0 economy that are going to be critical for the long run success of applied areas in West Texas and beyond. Let me close by thanking our regional leaders for their support and for collab and collaborating with WT in order to advance the economic development of West Texas. Thank you very much. Well, good morning and thank you very much for having me today. I'm Ken King, State Representative for House District 88. Um, I look around and see the growth of WT over the last 20 years, um, especially, and I'm amazed and, I, and I'm very proud to see it. And, and I think um, from a business standpoint, this is a perfect place to invest in, in meat production from, from the, the ranchers and the producers to the feed yards to the packing houses. You know, more than 25% of the fed cattle in the, in the United States are fed within a 100 mile radius of Amarillo. So this is, this is the epicenter for meat production and dairy. Of, of the United States and largely and a large part of the world. But beyond that, having a facility like this and the uh, $100 million investment Dr. Windler talked about into this area is a huge boon for our young people. What's drying up the panhandle is population. Our population tends to graduate high school and they leave and they don't come back. Having a facility like this that promotes education and research is, is a huge cog in the wheel to bring our young people back here and, and, and have them live in the panhandle and, and keep representing our values and our way of life. Um, educate, without an educated population, we will fail. And, and WT is doing a great job of promoting that. And I'm, I'm looking forward and um, will be proud to continue to support the efforts of West Texas A&M in the 87th. Thank you. Well, good morning. I'm Ford Price, State Representative for House District 87, and it is really an honor to be here this morning. Thank you, Dr. Wendler, for the invitation to join you. Uh, there are many jewels in the panhandle, in higher education specifically, but uh, West Texas A&M University and the Center for Advancing Food Animal Production is certainly one of them, and something we can all be proud of. Food Animal Production initiatives at West Texas A&M University are absolutely critical. And Dr. Wendler, thank you for uh, your kind words about the legislative support that the delegation here has provided, but it is definitely a two-way street. You all have been wonderful in providing us and equipping all of us with the information necessary to advocate for uh, not only this center and, and WTA and M University generally, but the initiatives and programs that you're promoting and developing here, just not only for the benefit of students, but for the benefit of research and for the benefit of our uh, ag industry and our producers and processors and everybody, uh, uh, all the stakeholders involved. So I really do appreciate and want to make sure you know how much we are grateful for that information and your cooperative spirit. The location of West Texas A&M University's uh, food animal production program and just the university itself is critical and I think very strategic. We have uh, obviously a benefit of being located right here in the beef capital uh, of our country. We have uh, the benefit of being in an agriculturally uh, based center of the state of Texas and we provide not, not only for the state of Texas but for the entire country. And so to advance these initiatives and programs and build upon the strength of a regional university as Dr. Terry mentioned, I think is absolutely strategic and critical. Obviously, it's important to us here at home. Uh, it's important to our state of Texas and the Panhandle community and our economy, but it's important to us as not just a state leader, and national leader, but a global leader. West Texas A&M University is being recognized internationally as a leader in this area, and I think it's fantastic that we are leveraging that right now with programs like this. I think it raises the university's profile, and I think it obviously helps with cutting edge research and the attention that it receives as well. A significant portion of the nation's food animal industry is receiving cutting edge research support that will help producers grow and prosper in a time of increasing global demand and pressing sustainability and food safety issues. 
with all of the animals and agricultural activity right here in our Panhandle community. Successful initiatives and programs like these are a huge economic shot in the arm for the state of Texas. To have research faculty, facilities, and programs out here addressing important research matters and talking to producers and talking to processors and industry stakeholders is absolutely a win-win for everybody involved. Uh, I know that, that like Representative Smithy and Representative King and Senator Seliger and others, we're all very proud to have supported the initiatives at the, at the uh, state legislature in the past and, and, and will gladly and wholeheartedly support them in the future. Our state's investment is reaping and will continue to reap many future dividends. Among them are advancements in ag education and enhanced research in food production to the benefit of students, industry, ranchers, farmers, and ultimately for the benefit of the American consumer. I just want to take a second to, to, to thank not only Dr. Windler and everybody sitting up here who have pr uh, proven their uh, dedication to advancing these initiatives, but uh, to other folks who aren't here. I see Dr. Keith, and Dr. Keith is, is uh, very much uh, a leader in, in, in advocating not only uh, for these programs, but, but right here on campus, uh, helping advance them as well. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Dean Hawkins uh, and what work he did in the past to, to bring us to where we are today. Uh, there's so many others, Dr. Bob Robinson, Ty Lawrence, there are just so many people who are uh, to be commended for all the work that they've done. I really appreciate that. It makes our job easier, but I'm really proud to call you colleagues and, and see the great work that you're doing. Again, I want to thank Dr. Wendler and WT uh, for strengthening your foundation of support and progress for ag sciences right here on this campus. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'm Representative John Smithy. I represent the 86th District, which covers the western part of the Texas Panhandle, including the campus of West Texas A&M University. You know, uh, as, you, as you stand here in this impressive new building, it's, uh, it's hard to remember that just a few years ago, this was an empty field. And uh, it's, it's an impressive structure. I think anybody that has been in this building and this entire facility has to be impressed with the job and the work that's being done here. Uh, but this was never about a, just a building. It was always about a vehicle to bring West Texas State, or West, West Texas A&M University. I, I went here 50 years ago and it's still West Texas State to me. But it was always about making West Texas A&M a, a preeminent regional university in the area of agriculture primarily. Uh, but also in this special niche, and we see it so prominently in the area of food animal production, where West Texas A&M is developing not only into a, a preeminent regional university, but is a nationally and world-recognized world institution that will be a leader <coughs> in this area of research and development in, in the area of production for, for generations to come. And... Uh, we have, I think, at West Texas A&M, after years, have found our niche. We've found where our, our future is, and there is a very big future and a very bright future. Uh, so I, I would be remiss, and I think all of us would be remiss, and, and uh, Representative Price pointed out a lot of the people who have been responsible for this, but this is all the result of a vision that has, has developed over a number of years and Dr. Walter Wendler has been such a, a huge part of refining that vision, of bringing it into focus and making it all come to pass. And we would also be remiss if we didn't, once again, every chance we get, thank all of the local people and groups that were instrumental in giving, a, a really sacrificially, to make all this possible. So much private money went into this facility and to these programs. And I can assure you it would have never happened just with government or state money. It required people from this area to participate, and they did participate. They came through when they needed to. And as a result of that cooperative venture, we have what we see today, which is really an exciting opportunity uh, for the future of the Texas Panhandle. Thank you very much.
Good morning. I'm Josh Weingarner. I'm the Director of Industry Affairs for Texas Cattle Feeders Association. And I, first of all, want to thank uh, you all for being here and, and thank everybody up here that, that's, that's spoken and will speak. Uh, we live in the beef capital of the world, the cattle feeding capital of the world. We also live in the uh, milk production capital of our, one of the leading places in our country. And then we are also in the uh, pork production capital of our state. Uh, you can see the strength that we have in animal agriculture and the, the economic effect that has on our region and our state. And uh, this uh, Center for Food and Animal Production is the culmination of an effort between uh, industry, the university, and then our legislative leaders who have helped us create this investment in the future of our economy and the future of our industries. Uh, it's great to have been part of the start of this and see the culmination of what can come when you have private investment, you've got state investment, and you've got a dedication from the faculty and a staff here at West Texas A&M to really create a premier institution for animal agriculture production. So I want to thank, thank you all for your hard work, your efforts on that, and especially uh, Representative Price, Representative Smithy, Representative King, and Senator Seliger for all the work that you did, not just in the past legislative session, but also in the 85th legislative session, because this was a uh, multi-step process to create the, you know, the, the complex that we're in today, but then the continued investment for the, uh, the faculty and the staff and the, the resources to continue the, uh, the, the education, the research, and a true partnership between our university and, uh, and our production, uh, the producers, the, the farmers, the ranchers, and then our, our legislative, uh, legislative representatives. So I want to thank you all. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and uh, look forward to uh, several years to come. I'm James Palmer, one of the directors for Texas Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association. I want to thank you for allowing the Texas Southwestern Cattle Raisers to be a part of your conference today, and thank you all for the work you do on behalf of the cattle industry. The research that's done here at the Center for Food Animal Production is more important than ever, given the recent difficulties. Demand changes, the logistical challenges, and other production concerns throughout the agriculture complex has led many Americans to feel anxious about feeding their families. And so for the first time in a long time, there's a renewed focus on the importance of agriculture. Today, the American cattle producer strives for continuous improvement to improve our herds and our products. We work hard to do more with less through significant investment in animal health, animal welfare, nutrition, and genetics. Lessons learned through past experiences in production and in research and development have brought us to where we are today. In fact, per USDA statistics, today we produce about the same amount of beef as we did in 1977 with about 36% less cattle. That's a monumental achievement. And it's only possible because of the dedication of the scientific community and the incredible research that has been done throughout the colleges and universities across the country. But the challenge continues. Future projections for world population suggest that by the year 2050, there will be 9.8 billion people. That's an increase of 2.2 billion over today, about a 30% increase. If we're going to provide ample nutrition, if we're going to provide sufficient high quality protein, if we're going to feed this country and this world, while overcoming all the challenges. 
our ability to supply tomorrow's world must be guided by the innovation and the leadership of meaningful research. We must base future practices on the available research, not just the available, but the best available research, and scientific data, which is precisely what the West Texas A&M University Center for Food Animal Production is doing. So that said, on behalf of the Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association, I applaud your, prog your progress on this mission and offer our thanks to those within this university system and to those in the Texas legislature who have made it possible. Thank you. Texas is the fifth largest dairy state in the country. And today, over 80% of that milk produced in our state is produced here in the Panhandle. West Texas A&M is centered right in the heart of our production area. Texas Association of Dairymen is excited about the future for both our organization, our growth in the industry, but more especially the connection we can have with West Texas A&M. We applaud our legislators for the initiative to see the importance of a college that it has a center on animal agriculture in this state and more especially in this area. Our future is connected on how successful we could be here and how well we can work together. The West Texas A&M campus has got the ability to be so centrally located to dairy operations and now plant operations that are popping up here in the Panhandle to produce other dairy products. The industry is going to mature West Texas A&M is going to mature. Both of our futures look extremely bright. We cannot wait for the chance to see how this grows between all the opportunities here with West Texas A&M. The Texas dairy industry applauds the growth here and all that's being done, and we look forward to a long, bright future. Thank you, my name is Kevin Pond, and I have the pleasure of serving as the Dean of the Paul Engler College of Agriculture and Natural Sciences. And I'd first like to start by uh, reading a statement that was sent to me by Brandon Gunn, who's the Executive Vice President for the Texas Pork Producers. Um, their association has a meeting today at 10 o'clock, so they couldn't be here, but he sent this for me to read. We at the Texas Pork Producers Association are proud to partner with West Texas A&M and are delighted with the Center for Advancing the Food Animal Production in the Panhandle. Commercial pork production is concentrated in the Panhandle and the additional teaching, research, and outreach is needed. We are excited for the increased number of students trained to support the industry needs. We especially applaud our legislatures uh, for, their associate, for their allocation and enthusiastically look forward to the vision of West Texas A&M's leadership. One thing I should say is the Paul Engler College of, of, Natural Sci of Agriculture and Natural Sciences has experienced tremendous growth. This has occurred over the last couple of decades, but especially in the last decade. The Department of Agricultural Sciences has really been the leader of this growth. Um, these new facilities that we're standing in right now, the expanded programs, the additional people, uh, will ensure the continued growth to meet the many needs of our animal industries in the Texas Panhandle and really beyond. We want to prepare our students for a range of careers in the food animal industry, from live animal production all the way to retail. In addition, we'll be training veterinary students to serve our West Texas communities and the region's livestock. Within the next tech two years, university officials estimate that over 100 new undergraduate and 40 new graduate students will enroll in agricultural programs here at West Texas A&M. The center will become a complementary environment where education, research, and outreach from preconception to the consumer will occur at one site. And this really provides an excellent model for other areas of the state. 
The Department of Agricultural Sciences has added personnel. Dr. Lonnie Luchek, an animal scientist in the meats area, began in January, uh, January 1. Nick Peterson, animal science instructor and the meats lab manager, began, will begin in, in uh, uh, June. Uh, sorry, did begin in June, and we have uh, Phil Polanchek, who is our feed lab manager, and uh, he is uh, taking taken, uh, charge of the feedlot already as well. We have two other positions that are in the interview process, uh, a risk management position to help in the dairy and beef areas, and we also have a, a PhD in genomics, uh, which uh, will, will help in the uh, genetics area. There are eight graduate students going to pursue PhD programs and two master's degree students, and four additional undergraduate students who will be involved in those research opportunities. They're all on board currently. The Vero program has included personnel and is in the process of beginning those interviews. We have a clinical veterinarian professor that will be one for beef industry and one for the dairy industry as well. We have research scientists, a veterinary lecturer, two contract veterinarians and licensed uh, veterinary technicians and other vet laboratory support program uh, people that are, are being hired. Now, all this is great, but one might ask, why is this commitment occurring at West Texas A&M University? Some have already alluded to some of those points. First reason is geography. We are located in the heart of animal production. The next is industry partners that we have. Industry partners work together in this region. They're not against one another, so we pull together. The people, the people of the university, the people of the industry, the people of the legislature, they all also know how to partner and how to develop solutions to solve problems. And last, our legislators. Our legislators know and understand the needs of the panhandle. And with that knowledge, they work tireless, tireless, tirelessly to make sure those goals are met. So really, thank you to all of us that are here. Uh, thank you for all of who have contributed uh, to what's going to happen. And I really look forward to celebrating some, some uh, successes in the near future and successes that will last into the distant future uh, because of the investment that has been made. I want to thank our speakers for joining us today and for our audience for joining us virtually for the update today. And this concludes our virtual press conference this morning. Thank you.